going forward for me Kyle is either a 7 or an 11 OK, well, obviously the rules have come up time and time again, particularly the new advanced rule that's kicked in. But is there more of an issue with the way the game is being played and is being refereed than just the new rules? Yes, yeah, so look, Joanne, there's been a lot of talk about the rules, right? And as tends to happen with these things, everything gets thrown into, into the one pop. Right? I think you need to separate it out from the advantage conversation, right? I just think that was a, a bad call by the association and needs to be looked at. But as interesting, if not more interesting for me, is the referees are getting a lot of criticism about the amount of frees. But when you look at it, and even you look at the reaction of the players here, in the main, these are actually frees that the players are committing. And I, I think for the first time in a long time, it appears as if the referees are refereeing the rules by the laws of, of, of the game. A lot of is made about the tackle now, Joanne. The tackle is not defined be in, in hurling. It's very, it, it's, it's very unclear for everybody. You can see by the reaction of, of the players. And it's not the first time I've been on about this, right? But I think that the use of the spare hand, a lot of people talk about, you know, all of the pulling and dragging and the wrestling that's come into the game. I think the use of the spare hand is, is, a, is a big issue for the game and causing a lot of issues. And that's definitely one thing that the referees appear to be cracking down on. And along with that, as important is the implementation of the four-step rule. That is very important. There's a lot of other things I've spoken about, like even hand passes, stuff like that, all of that. If the referees will actually call out that four-step rule, I think that it's going to have a very positive impact in the game. Don, look, I think like in, in, in the few clips that you showed there from the Galway game, there's, there's nobody in the country I think could disagree with you there and say that they weren't frees. But if you look at the way the games were refereed two weekends ago, I suppose... You know, we say they let the play go, right? But sure, if it's a free, it's a free. But I think that game was definitely refereed a small bit more stricter than two weekends ago, in my opinion. And you're right, the use of the spare hand is a problem. But I suppose there's a difference here. So if somebody grabs somebody's hand and doesn't allow them to release the ball, that's a free. But I mean, what else do you do with the spare hand if someone is running at you? But like, where, 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 where's that in, in, in the rules? And we're all for a free-flowing game. And we all love to see the game free-flowing. But like the likes of that pulling and dragging and wrestling is not part of our games. And it has been allowed. It's been allowed right through the 2000s. It's been building, building, building to where it is now. And there's almost like, there's almost like a rubby type feel coming into, into our games. And I think one of the ways to address it is to implement the, 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 the not using the spare hand, stop the wrestling, but all sort of four steps. Like in hurling, if it, from, from behind, you're allowed hook. Okay, from the side, your load shoulder. Really hard thing to do, to do bang on. You saw a Galway player there claiming it was a shoulder. It was an absolute uh, shoulder in the back. But from the front, like everybody is coaching now when a player is coming at you. Get your hands in around him, hit him in the chest, hit him in the bypass or in, in the bicep, knock the ball away from his hands. That's not in the rules of the game. The rules of the game uh, do not allow for that type of behaviour. Sorry, Shane, go on. No, I, I agree with you in a sense, but I just, I suppose if I'm standing here and you're coming running at me, right, like, the thing I have is do you leave someone just run past you? You have to stand your ground, and if you put your hands out, you can just run past my hand, and if I hold you up, it's a free. So it becomes very difficult, doesn't it? But Shane, the ball must be in play, right? What's happening now is the ball is not in play for so long because the referees allow, are allowing the players to take too many steps. They're also then allowing the players to stop them up like that. When did that come into the game? When, or when, when is that part of hurling that you can actually collide and go in and wrestle a player with both hands? That's, that's, it's, not, it's not part of, part of our game don't at all. A, don't a, a cynic sitting watching at home might argue that perhaps the reason you're coming on here is because Cork are, are much less physical team than other counties are and likewise they might suggest the reason Shane is arguing with you is because Limerick are probably the most physical team out there so so is there some sort of Cork bias in, included in this, this point of view What do you mean by physical? As in use of physicality, you're a small Cork or a smaller team but I, 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 I see, I, I, I don't know when, when we're talking about physicality, I'm on about the implication or the implementation of the rules of the game. So, so I, should they, it, I, should they, should about, they referee the I, game to the, I, exactly to the rule book? And I, I think when you're talking, nobody mentioned about physicality. I think people associate, and I hear this stuff about manliness. Everyone wants to keep manliness in the game. There's nothing manly about pulling a jersey. There's nothing manly about shouldering someone into the chest. There's nothing manly about wrestling, right? There's loads of other manly aspects to, to, to the game. And I think we're getting it mixed up. What I'm actually on about is the implementation of the rules and the, the, the need for the referees to actually 
referee the referee the rules as they're laid out currently in the rule book. Well, so then what can a player do? How does a player tackle then? Well, I, I, like you look at the, the Limerick half forward line, we'll say, of, you know, say, we'll say when, when, when Kyle was there, you Tom Morrissey, Kyle and Grodin, I know Kyle has gone back, right? But they are three huge men, right? And, you know, this, there's this thing now about the swarm tackle. Even forgetting about the word tackle, we'll use the word swarm. The three of them come in and they swarm one guy, okay? I mean, they can't just tr- three them stand there and allow that guy to run out past them because they can't just touch him. Like, it can't become a non contact game all of a sudden. But nobody talking about making a non contact. When a player has the ball, he, he's meant to avoid the tackle. The, ta- the way you tackle in hurling by the rules is you wait until the player throws the ball back up. That's why the four-step rule is there. And I think if that's implemented, you'll see more and more players playing the game the way it was intended, that when the ball is back in play, you'll see them trying to grab the ball with their hands, you'll see them trying to flick it away, and so on and so on. But my main point is, I think that's been a very interesting development and I think there's one aspect that's helping it I do think the lack of crowds is helping the referees right because we all know the pressure that the crowd can bring and and bring to bear on the referees and it'll be very interesting have the referees the guts to see this through for the summer that that seems to be a common theme and question that is asked when we're in our